What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an infinite scrolling background for your game using Pygame and Python. So uh, there are a few different types of game where it would be useful to have essentially an infinite background. I mean, there's definitely some games where you're going to want to predefine the whole background. Um, but a lot of the times if you're doing like an infinite runner game like the type that we've done on this channel a few times We did a like a flappy bird style game And then we also did just an endless like jumper where infinite enemies come at you and in both of those scenarios It could be really useful to have an image that would make your give your game a really cool background and it would essentially um, replicate itself infinitely until the game was over and I'm going to show you how to do it uh, going forwards and backwards so um, there's a few times that you would want this sort of thing, um, but you would want it not controlled by a player. Uh, you would just want the map constantly moving past you, where something like if you think of the classic game like Jetpack Joyride or like Flappy Bird, um, the background is moving unrelated to the player. You just control like the y-axis movement. Um, and then there are a lot of games like side-scrolling shooters or platformers where you're in control of the movement and you want that to also control where the background is. I'll show you how to do both in this video. All right, so let's quickly set up a uh, Pi game and uh, start by importing Pi game. And since I want to use uh, some of the built-in like math module functions, I'm also going to import math. There is a way that you can um, do it without importing math. I'll talk about it when we get there, but I'm going to import it, make our lives easier. Um, so then if we do pygame.init, uh, that initializes the pygame module, and you want to start that right in the beginning. Um, and then always set up a timer. So um, some people call it clock, some people call it timer. Uh, it doesn't matter. I usually use timer, so to be consistent on this page, I'll use timer as well. Um, but you could call it clock as well. And then create a frame rate variable. We'll have it run at 60 FPS. Um, set up a width and a height for your page, uh, for your screen. So we'll do width of 1600 so that we can really see like multiple panes of our photo. Um, and then height 400. And then uh, let's just go ahead and start there. We'll do screen equals and then pie game dot display dot set underscore mode parentheses and then in square brackets give it your width and your height variables and that's going to set uh, your screen. And then um, if you want you will go ahead and do this set caption and that's going to be the text that pops up on the top menu bar and we'll just call this side scroller. And <clears throat> let's go ahead and just do kind of the minimum we have to do to get the window to open. So we'll say run equals true and then wall run. And then this in here is where you put your clock dot tick FPS. I always call this the main game loop. I got some extra extra colon here. I always call this the main game loop. I think that's a good way of thinking about it. Like everything underneath this wall running is what you want to have happen every iteration of your game. <clears throat> Uh, so that should actually be timer.tick. I'll go ahead and make my text quite a bit bigger. I know these uh, photos can be, or these uh, videos can be hard to follow when the text is real small. <clears throat> okay, so it's timer.tick at your frame rate. And then uh, the next thing you have to do just to get a window to open is going to be for event in pygame.event.get. And if you've seen any of our past game videos, you know the first one that you want to put in is if event.type is equal to pygame.quit, all caps, and then run equals false. And you can call this running, you can call this like level or whatever you want, but um, the basic, what this is doing is saying, okay, the only thing that's going to let us exit this game loop is hitting the quit button, but that's actually super important because uh, if you don't do that, you'll have an infinite while loop and that will crash your computer. It's, well, not necessarily crash your computer, but crash your program for sure. Okay, then pygame.display.flip and then pygame.quit. And I'll go ahead and run this. We're not actually putting anything on the screen, so I don't know that we're gonna see. Yeah, we just get a window. Um, we're not technically filling it with a black background. Uh, this is just its default. 
but the reason I made it so wide will be pretty clear once we load in this background image. So that's just, this is the basics of what we need to get Pygame initialized. Let's go ahead and get our image in here. So I'll pull it up. This is all I'm gonna use for my background. I literally just went to Google and I typed in uh, like infinite looping background. You can create one if you want. Um, there's also tutorials for how to do that, but this is a code channel, not an art channel. Um, so I trust you can figure that out. I've, but you can kind of see like where this branch hits the right edge of the image is also like right where it's going off screen on the left. So they split this up to be an infinite image, um, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, load that image into the game. So to do that, let's go down below where we set the caption and I'll just uh, make a variable called background. And to get an image in here, it's just pygame.image.load and then uh, the name of your image. And so drop it into the same folder as your game and that's gonna make referencing it um, really easy. And so this is BG trees. I have one for space too, but it's huge and it doesn't really loop very well. It's actually just my desktop background. Um, but I was using it while I was playing around with this. So, okay. And then let's get the width of that, which will be background width. And we can use um, a built-in get width function. So we just do background dot get underscore width. And the reason we want to do that is that's going to tell us how many we can fit in our window that we made <clears throat> um, doing some math, which everybody loves math. And then we're going to set the background equal to um, something that we're going to essentially scale to be the right height. So this might not be something that you have to do if you've picked a background image that's already 400 pixels high. Um, but you can see that I mine is not just from looking at it. It's uh, 360 by 270. So if I were to load this in, I would still have 130 pixels um, below it that are just black. So uh, this is an optional step depending on the background that you're using, but this will make sure that it fits properly in my window. So it, you do pygame.transform.scale and then uh, the image, so background, and then the size you want it to be, which is gonna be background width, comma, height. So just like that, and this is going to take the same image we already loaded in, and it's gonna scale it to be the right height. And then we will go ahead and get the rectangle affiliated with it, just so we can do some rectangle uh, functionality. So it's gonna be background dot, uh, actually background underscore rect is going to equal background dot get rect. And so the get rect. Um, the Pygame module gives you a lot of built-ins that really make this pretty easy and pretty fast. And then we're going to control our movement left and right with a variable I'll call scroll. So we'll just initialize it up here. But then the number of tiles, or I guess one way to think of this would be like panels. So the number of background images that you need to be drawing at any one time is going to be equal to math.seal and here's why I brought in the um, math module because this is going to be a division that will always round up. So we're going to divide the width of the screen by background width and then I'm going to add two to it. So it's always rounding up and actually once I get these drawn on the screen I will come back to this and I will modify this to show you like I hope I will remember to come back to this and modify this to show you like how to uh, um, what this is doing and why we want to add two to it. But basically, if you divide the screen up and let's say your image fits perfectly, well, as soon as you go left or as soon as you go right, um, you are going to have an image that's not yet loaded to the right. Um, and so when we do the drawing, we need to tell it how many different images to draw and then what condition is going to cause it to stop drawing one to the left end and start drawing new one to the right end. It's gonna be easier to show than talk about, but just know I'm putting this plus two in because we want one extra behind us and one extra in front of us. So no matter where we're moving, there's always a little bit of runway. And then to actually get these on the screen, we'll come down just below our timer dot tick and we will set up a for loop to draw them. So we'll say for I in range, for I in range, there we go, panels, 
So this is going to loop through however many panels the math determines we need to do. And it's going to be screen.blit. So that's block transfer. It's going to um, transfer the screen, the image onto the screen. And then it's the background image. And then we give it uh, x and y coordinates. And so the x coordinate is going to be i um, times the background width that we got. Um, and then plus scroll. So initially this is gonna be zero, so when it loads in, um, it'll be uh, in the right spot. But, um, but this is going to be how we control the movement. And then once the scroll variable gets larger than the width, that's when we reset things. So, um, so essentially we wanna draw it in I times background width plus scroll, but this is going to start at zero, so we won't have anything to the left of our image. Um, so we actually want to do minus background width and this is going to shift everything one block to the left so the first image will be drawn off screen to the left and then the last image will be drawn off screen to the right um, so that's what this for loop is going to do and that should look pretty good let me see so that's probably going to give us the background yep and we can't move it yet, um, but that's okay. You can see just from one image, and remember this, uh, I think it's this branch that's actually like where the panels break. But if you have a good image, a good repeating background, um, you can't even necessarily see the line at which the next image is being drawn. And if you could see to the left and to the right, there's gonna be one full panel being drawn on both sides of it as well right now. Okay. So let's go ahead and carry on and now let's actually incorporate how you would move. So um, I'll show like if this was just an endless runner, your task might be nearly complete because you'll just put some variable that you want the game to the background to move at. Um, so you'll just make it whatever five and then you'll want to put in here if absolute value of scroll is greater than BG width. And actually this isn't gonna be uh, five, this is gonna be plus equal to five. But so um, if the scroll is greater than the width, and I might need to make that a minus five, we'll see in a second, let's see if this works. Um, but if it's greater than the width of your image, and I called it background width, then that's when we wanna set scroll equal to zero. So let's go ahead and check what that's doing. This may actually move everything to the wrong way. Yeah, so this would not be the normal way to run a game. Let's do minus equals. And that's why um, absolute value is so important. If you're going left or right, this will handle it. But I'll just go ahead and do this. So what this is doing is every loop, it's moving every image five pixels to the left. Um, and that's basically how the continuously moving games are played. So games where the player's only controlling one dimension, like up or down. But that's actually, I think, a minority of games. I think what's more common is you use the left and right arrow keys to run around the map, and that's what should control what background is iterating. So that's pretty cool. You've got the concept now. If you're familiar with event handling, then maybe you're done with the video. If you are done with the video, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video. It really helps me out a lot. And let me know in the comments below what I could have done better or what you'd like to see in a future video. But if you are here and you wanna see how to add some player control to the background, let's continue. So if event.type is equal to pygame.keydown, and now we'll actually look at the arrow keys to see if the player wants to move left, wants to move right. And we'll say if event.key is equal to pygame dot and then k underscore right, so this is you click the right arrow key, then what we will say is direction equals minus one. And the reason I'm doing that is this is background direction. So if you go right, you're actually your pl player would be staying in place, but the whole background should move to the left. So you'll see why I do, uh, do it that way in a second. But if say you had a player movement and uh, background movement, you would probably want this to be a separate variable that's like um, BG direction or something like that. And then pygame.left will actually, K left, will actually make that uh, direction equals positive one. Copy that in here. And what we need to do is I'm going to basically take this whole thing and on key up, oops, control Z, on key up, we want to reset direction to zero. So you can take pretty much all the same code, key up, 
And then if pi game is, uh, if you go up on left or right, direction is equal to zero. Um, but you still want to add these because you don't want it to be like, oh, I was holding down the A button for no reason and then direction went to zero because I let go of it even though I was still holding an arrow key down. So adding this second layer of if is important. But now we're not using that direction variable anywhere. So what we want to do is we want to come up into scroll and we want to start by making direction equal to zero. And if you think about what we just did, well, we want scroll to be plus equals to now um, basically five times the direction. So if we tell it to move left, then it's going to be adding five to it every iteration. And if we tell it to move right, and this would actually, I think, be better as a variable. So we'll come up here, we'll make a speed variable, speed equals five. And in a lot of games, there's things like power-ups or speed improvements. All you would have to do is temporarily make your speed higher while you have that uh, power up and that would increase your speed or as the game gets progressively more difficult as your score gets higher you add one to that speed every 20 points or something so let's see if I press the right arrow key you can see the whole background moving to the left and I let go of it and if I press the left arrow key it's moving to the right so our our movement is working perfectly um, now maybe just to give an idea like where we are where a player would be relative to this window i'll go ahead and draw a quick shape on so i'll say player is equal to pi game dot draw dot rect and we're just going to throw it on the screen i'll give it like a yellow gold so that's some r and some g but no b and then we'll put it on the screen at about quarter width so it'll have like three quarters of the screen in front of it always and then we'll put it at about three fourths down as well so we'll do height times times 0.75 and then let's just make it a 50 by 50 rectangle and i'm going to make it a hollow rectangle um, and i'm going to round it so that's what that uh, five is t saying border width and eight is saying how rounded to make the radius but now we should see no matter where we move, we've got the background moving and our player stays in place. And so this will give an illusion of the player actually like running forward, even though what we're doing is sliding the background back. And that's a really neat trick that's super common in game design. Um, and so that's even like uh, in the Flappy Bird tutorial on this channel, we just move stars in the distant background to the left slowly and it makes the player feel like he's moving forward dodging obstacles. Um, so that's it. That's the tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Um, you know, if you have any questions about what you saw here today, why we did things a certain way, or you tried it and it's not working for you, just let me know about in the comments below. I'll help you out in any way I can. And, uh, um, I really appreciate likes on the video, subscribes to the channel. It helps me out a ton. All of the support I've been getting so far has been great. And as always, good luck with your projects and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.